business models and external financing for creative startups. So in this video, we're going to um, look at several important things. One is um, what are the stages when we start a creative enterprise? What, what stages we have to pass through? Then we're going to look at different business models, what business model is and um, what are the typical online and offline business models which we could use for creative enterprise. And then we're going to concentrate on some external um, financial sources, not just fundraising, but also financing for creative startups. So there are, there are five usually stages which are very important when we start such kind of creative enterprise. Um, the first one is the initial preparation, um, trying to elaborate uh, ideas um, and um, asking initial questions. The second phase is very important because we have to filter these ideas based on several criteria. Um, for example, um, the market relevance of this idea, um, is it really viable in terms of the economic indicators, um, also the risk which we take and many others. And then the third phase, which is also very important, is the protection of this idea through the intellectual copyright. Um, in this video, we're go going to concentrate mainly on the fourth and the fifth uh, phases, which are elaboration of the business model um, or the business plan, and then looking for um, external financial sources uh, from individuals as well as organizations. So what is a business model? Because in arts and culture, we usually concentrate a lot on project writing, applying to foundations, sponsors, governments, um, external, um, also international institutions. Um, there is le very little said about, um, about business models in the arts. Usually when we elaborate a business model, um, we want to look at um, who is going to buy the product or the service, what the customers and the clients are, where are we going to generate the revenues, um, what the costs are going to, to, to be, um, and how to really make it, and how to make it in a strategic framework, not just um, to have this enterprise for a couple of months, but to have it for um, a longer period of time. Um, so this is why the business model is important, and um, um, it, could elaborate, it could be a basics uh, for elaboration also of a business plan, um, or not, some of the um, startup entrepreneurs, they prefer to just make a business model, two or three pages. Um, others are doing a, a whole elaboration of a business plan, which, which could be much, much longer, uh, covering also several stages and several, several chapters of this uh, business plan. So when we talk about, about the business plan, there are several important, um, important parts of, of a possible business plan. But before we, we try to look at it, um, let's try to find out what are the usual business models um, that form this background, the basics of the business plan. So the business models in arts and culture could be split into two major uh, parts. One of them are more conventional and the other one are online. So the conventional models, especially those that are related with the physical presence of the, of the arts venture, um, are called bricks and mortar because this is, for example, a gallery space, um, a theater uh, which has a physical presence, um, a recording studio and many others. Um, some of these business models could be um, without any intermediary person, so they're very much one-to-one uh, -one in terms of the direct sale of a creative product or service. And there are also conventional business models that um, pass through different agents and uh, distributors or people who are going through the chain to make this bridge between the creative service, creative product, and, and the final consumer. Um, there are also business models um, that are conventional, but that are, that are based mainly on uh, connections between the artists. So we call them uh, collective models, where the artists get together, um, they share a space. Um, for example, could be um, helping each other with printing materials, with advertising, also with marketing because this is the way how they decrease their overhead costs. On another hand, especially in 21st century, um, the digital entrepreneurs, and in the first part of the video we mentioned who are they, um, they are looking for models to sell their, their products and, and services online. And these business models also are getting more and more uh, well spread in the arts, culture and creative industries. Uh, for example, we can have um, a premium model which is a way how we offer uh, basic services free online and then um, if the um, possible potential consumer or user would like more services then they pay that they pay additional money 
This is the way how, how for example, some of the well-known uh, services like Skype or LinkedIn, they, they function. And in the arts and culture sector, entrepreneurs are also using them in some cases. We also have affiliated models. Um, we have advertising models where we put the banners of um, uh, potential sponsors and um, advertisers online on our website uh, who pay for a certain period of time. But usually to use these models, um, the advertisers are asking us to have um, to have a substantial amount of users um, that are that are using our website. Um, there are also models online that could pass directly from the website, like for example an online gallery, a space where we sell directly crafts and art products, um, or could be through other websites, which uh, which is the affiliated model where we are using other websites to also um, sell online products and services. Um, so it's a good question, what are actually the main um, focus points of any business model? And these are two. One um, is the revenue projection, and the second one is the break-even point. The revenue projection usually is very hard for people who work in the, the arts, culture and creative industries, because many of them complain that they can't really make projection for the next three years. But remember one thing, it's so hard to find external investor and external partner if you really don't show a potential for growth in any uh, business planning. And this potential for growth could be shown only if there is a very good, very thorough, well elaborated um, um, revenue projection. The second is the break even, and this is the point where, very simply saying, where the costs um, are covered by the, by the revenues. And this is also important because this is the difference between the social entrepreneurship and business entrepreneurship. Uh, in the business entrepreneurship, we try to, after the break even point, make profit, while in many social enterprises, um, at least they want to make it, they want to, to have this break even point. Even if they don't make profit, they might have some financial surplus as a result. Um, so what are the questions which we usually ask when we are looking for external financing? It's very important to find out how much we are ready to invest ourselves as um, startup creative entrepreneurs. Then the second question is how much we are looking from external sources and what is this ratio between the initial investment of the entrepreneur and then the partnership which he or she is looking from, from outside. Um, and then when this money is going to be spent, for how long, and what is really the startup capital which we need. Um, so when we are trying to consider different options for external financing, usually we split them into two main groups. One of them are so-called debt instruments, um, and the others are equity investment. The difference is that um, debt instruments could be given by individuals, by banks, or by other um, financial institutions, and they usually mean a sum of money uh, which they give to us in, usually in the form of a loan, uh, but it has to be repaid as an interest on a monthly basis or a weekly basis. So it really put a huge stress on the possible cash flow of, of the uh, cultural enterprise. Um, and then also, it, um, but, but the good thing is that it does not dilute the ownership. So the owner of the enterprise is still um, the entrepreneur. While if we're looking for equity financing, which could also come either from institutions or individuals, for example, angel investors or even family members, um, the equity stake in the business always, always um, requires um, a dilute of ownership. So we have to be owners together with someone else. And this is the reason why many startup entrepreneurs, they really prefer much more um, debt um, instruments, financial instruments, rather than uh, equity one, because they are not really happy and they do not want to uh, separate their ownership with someone else, especially at the beginning when um, they are the initiator of, uh, of this idea. Uh, another possible way of uh, looking at external financing, which is uh, becoming more and more popular nowadays, is crowd financing. A lot is written online and offline about crowd financing. I'm very simply saying, again, it's the way how uh, we ask um, anonymous um, users, usually online, um, to uh, support us or to invest in our business. Um, this could be for a, a, a profit-making enterprise, a project that has a business element, but could also be for a social enterprise. Um, there are three main methods by which um, um, crowd financing usually works. One of them is a donation method, which me as a user, I just support the enterprise because I, I really find out this idea uh, very useful, very interesting, or something which I'm intrigued, or something which really helps me in my daily life, which means I do not expect any return. 
The second option is um, equity investment in this um, in this crowd financing, where every user have a stake. Um, and after that, if this enterprise um, makes a profit, then uh, the user receives stake. And the third one is the pre-ordered method, where uh, the users usually um, give some money at the beginning, or they they buy the product even before uh, this product is is uh, is placed on the market. Uh, so of course it's a little bit risky, but crowd financing is considered to be a great method uh, by which um, we can we can uh, generate money from um, from anonymous users. Um, talking about external financing, one more uh, important um, emphasis that there could be NGO investors and venture capital. Um, NGO investors are usually individuals that uh, have a long existence in the specific industry, so they have the know-how, they have the knowledge. Um, they also help with contacts, with mentoring and coaching of, of the startup entrepreneur. But mind something important that the NGO investors uh, really want to see an enterprise with very high potential of growth. Uh, and they want a return on their investment. So it's not applicable for every arts and culture field, but for some culture industries, for example, gaming industry or fashion, um, that could also that could be one of the ways. And finally, venture capital. Uh, we are not going to cover it, but just as a as an initial knowledge, uh, these are um, much higher investment in enterprises, uh, which have very high potential of growth, and they're usually very well known in um, technological sector, in IT sector, in also uh, biotechnologies. Very little uh, really still spread in in the field of arts, culture, and creative industries. So I guess in this video we covered uh, the important areas related with the startup uh, phases of uh, creative enterprise, also with uh, some possibilities for business model and what is important in the business models, and finally, what are the possible external sources of uh, financing from individuals as well as from organizations. Thanks very much for listening this course. I hope active listening. And um, I do encourage you to look at um, all the online resources that are connected with that. And hopefully, at the end of all, uh, we are going to successfully pass through also the test which um, we have prepared for you. Thanks very much once again. And uh, be wonderful creative entrepreneurs in the future.